Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a tutorial about using subdivision creases. Uh, and for this example, I'll be using Maya 2014. So for those of you who may not know too much about what creases are, say you have this cube here, and you smooth the cube by hitting the 3 button, you end up getting something that looks kind of like a ball. Uh, and maybe you, you don't actually want a ball. Uh, you don't want something as hard edged as this. You'd like if there was a nice uh, fillet on this edge, but you don't want something as smooth as this. So uh, generally the way you do this is you go and you add all these support edges, which are edge loops around the edges that you currently have. Uh, and then that will do the right thing when you smooth the mesh. However, it's really time consuming to add those and it also adds a lot of extra faces to your mesh. So another technique is to use creasing. So let's go in and uh, we'll select all these edges and we'll go to the crease set editor and we'll hit new with those edges selected and there we go. We now have um, a smoother mesh, uh, however one that's not as smooth as if it were just uh, that, that sphere that I showed you earlier. Now if, if you render this you're going to see that this is actually uh, has much nicer uh, edges and here it doesn't look very good. And the reason it doesn't look very good is because uh, it's doing a viewport approximation of what the final mesh will look like. And the way you can control the quality of that is by going into the attribute editor and going to smooth mesh and increasing this preview division levels. So say we put this to 5, now that's going to be a lot closer to what the final mesh will look like when it gets rendered. So you see that uh, it you know, has this nice uh, fillet around all these uh, edges here. So in general you'll probably need to increase this value so that the, the version you're seeing in the viewport looks a lot closer to what your, your final rendered mesh is going to be. And uh, the nice thing about having it here is say you need to go in later on and you need to change the crease value, you can just change it in one place and it changes it for all the edges that you have selected. So say you have a bunch of objects, like uh, you know hundreds of objects, you can select all the edges you want, crease them in one crease set, and then you can change the creases, uh, the crease amount after the fact. And you can even do stuff like add or remove edges to these crease sets. So let's do a bit more of a complex example. I have these two tank tread sort of things. And this guy over here, you can see, uh, has a lot of faces. And I added all these support edges that I had mentioned before to make sure this smooths properly. So when I hit 3, uh, it even says, hey, you know, this has a lot of faces. And it does. It has close to 47,000 verts in it. Uh, are you sure you really, really, really want to smooth this? So I'll say yes, and uh, we'll wait a moment. And I get the results that I'm after, where this is now a lot more smoothed. However, again, there's a lot of extra edges in there. Now this guy over here has very few uh, edges. In fact, this uh, guy over here has 10 times the number of edges that this guy has over here. Uh, and this guy is ready for uh, creases. So if we smooth this guy, first of all, you'll see that this looks totally wrong. And that's because there's no creases on there yet. So let's stick some creases on. So uh, what you normally do is you'd go in and select all of the edges that are, have a 90 degree angle, uh, but since I'm trying to do this fast, I'll just select all the edges, even the interior edges, and add that to a, a crease set over here. But in general, you would uh, want to go in and only select the exterior edges, none of the interior edges. So there we go. I've added the crease set. And it doesn't look quite as sharp as this, and that's mostly uh, the same reason as before, and that is that um, if we rendered it, it would look fine, but because uh, this value is kind of low, uh, it ends up looking not as, uh, as exact as it could. And there. Now turning that to 3 uh, means that the results we're getting are much closer to the original mesh, and if we wanted something even more closer, we could increase that to 4. Uh, and if we wanted to make this harder or softer, of course, we can uh, change the crease value here. So the two big advantages are, number one, the thing with creases has way fewer faces, which is uh, always good for uh, the viewport. And number two is, let's say somebody, uh, you did this, and then uh, the director said, hey, can you make uh, these edges smoother? Uh, you have to go in and change all these support edges, which would be a huge nightmare and take a lot of time. Whereas here, all you got to do is go to your crease value and change it wherever you want, and you get the results that you're expecting. So hopefully this is somewhat persuasive that uh, creases are definitely a cool thing and uh, very, very useful to use as opposed to using uh, the support edge technique. 
So uh, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. And uh, visit my website, neilblevins.com, for more tutorials and information. And if you want to be notified next time I do a video tutorial, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Later.